In this video, I'm going to show you how you can access and work with Windows 365 from a Mac. Now, you might not want to install Windows on your Mac directly using a VM or bootcamp because maybe you're not using it a lot. Maybe you're just taking a course in school and you only need a Windows machine for a semester or a short period of time. You don't want to take up the space on your Mac and you don't want to be in a situation where you have to go and buy a Windows laptop just to take that particular course. Well, the good news is that Microsoft now has Windows 365. It's very easy to set up and use, and I'm going to show you how to access it using your Mac computer. I have a lot of students that have a Mac, but they need to study something that only runs in Windows, like a data analytics service or something, Power BI, something along those lines. And let's have a look at how we can do that. Before I can use Windows 365, I'm going to have to create myself a Windows 365 system. So I'm going to go into Safari, and I'm going to go to windows365.microsoft.com. Once I log in and authenticate, any machines that I've already created will appear here, and I can go in and I can create more cloud PCs. When I click to create more cloud PCs, that'll take me to my administration center where I can purchase services. If I go through, you'll notice that I can purchase Windows 365 for business, for enterprise, and if I already have a license for Windows, 360, or for Windows 10 or Windows 11, I suppose now, I can go in and I can purchase here. When I go into the details, I would go in, choose what I'm looking for in terms of the power. So for example, if I want something like two virtual CPUs with uh, 64 gigs of RAM, let's say I want to go to 128, I can choose the quantity in here, and you'll notice that this would cost me $44.80 per month for this particular machine. I have to confirm that I actually have that license, and then I can purchase it. I already have a machine, so I'm not going to repurchase another machine. I have my one machine that already shows up. So if we go here, I can download the remote desktop. But in addition to being able to download the remote desktop to access the machine, I also have this very important button that says Get Subscription URL. This URL is what I'm going to use in order to find the machines I just created. So I copied that, I now have that in my clipboard. Going back home, I can also go in and I can access it through the browser. So very simply, I can go in, click Open in Browser. I can allow it to access local resources such as clipboard, microphone, printer. Once I authenticate, whatever I was doing on the machine will automatically appear here within my browser. I can even go and make it full screen. So now I've got my Windows 10 environment here. Whatever I was doing when I last left off will be right there. And I can go in and take a look at the environment. I won't save the blank document there. And I can go in and start working with Windows 10 in a Mac environment. This is all directly through the browser. I didn't have to install a single thing on this Mac. Very handy if I'm in a computer lab or I'm using somebody else's system and I want to log in, but I don't want to install anything on their computer. Let's take it out of full screen and I'll show you another way that I can connect. Notice that I also had the option of going in and downloading the remote desktop for Mac. That's something I've already done. So when I download and install the remote desktop for Mac, you'll notice I have PCs, different PCs that I can connect to remotely, and I have workspaces. The way that I got this workspace here is I went in and you can see this has one virtual CPU, two gigs, and this is an older machine. So I'm actually gonna get rid of that machine. And what I'm gonna do is add a workspace in here. I'm going to put the URL for the one that I just created. It's going to discover it. I'm going to say, add it in. And of course, once I authenticate again, it'll set up that workspace. And you'll see that I have my two core four gig 64 gig storage. Of course, I have to authenticate again, and I'm going to get the remote desktop environment. Now I have a full screen Windows 10 environment here. This is going to be a better experience than going through the web browser. When I go through here, I can actually use things like the webcam that's on my Mac, and I can connect to this environment. I hope this video was useful for you, and if it was, consider hitting the like button and subscribing for more tips on how to use technology to teach and learn better. Thanks for watching.